the Employee Retention Credit, ERC, White Paper and Video Course. Section 2. Eligibility for the ERC. Qualifying Employers. For purposes of the ERC, the term eligible employer means any employer carrying on a trade or business during the calendar quarter for which the credit is determined. A business is considered an employer if it has at least one employee. An employee is defined as an individual who performs services for an employer and is considered an employee under common law principles. Note, the distinction between a common law employee and an independent contractor is important for tax withholding purposes. The IRS automatically assumes workers are common law employees unless the company can prove otherwise. Thanks, Nova. I appreciated the break. I can take it for a while. To qualify for the ERC, an employer must meet specific eligibility requirements, which are outlined below. Fully or partially suspended operations. The employer must have experienced a full or partial suspension of their operations due to a government order related to COVID-19 or have experienced a significant decline in gross receipts. Significant decline in gross receipts. The employer must have experienced a significant decline in gross receipts, defined as a 20% decline in gross receipts in a quarter compared to the same quarter in 2019. For 2020, the decline must begin greater than 50% decline to qualify. For employers who were not in operation in 2019, the comparison was made to the corresponding quarter in 2020. Small or mid-sized employer. The ERC is available to small and mid-sized employers with fewer than 500 employees. There are no restrictions based on the type of business and eligible employers include for-profit and non-profit organizations. Full or partial shutdown of operations. It is unlikely that your business experienced full or partial shutdown without your awareness. However, it is possible that the shutdown was by management or out of an overabundance of caution. Remember, to qualify, the shutdown must have been ordered by a government entity due to COVID-19. To determine if your business was fully or partially shut down, you should review the government orders that were in effect in your jurisdiction during the period in question. If your business was subject to a government order requiring a shutdown or a significant reduction in operations due to COVID-19, it generally qualifies as fully or partially suspended. You can review government orders by visiting the websites of federal, state, and local government agencies that have issued orders related to COVID-19. Additionally, you may have received notices or communication from the government regarding shutdown orders or other restrictions to which you were subject. It's important to note that even if your business could continue operating through remote work or other means, it may still qualify as partially suspended if it could not continue operations in the same manner as before the government order. If you believe your business was fully or partially suspended due to a government order related to COVID-19, in that case, you should consult with a tax professional to determine your eligibility for the Employee Retention Credit, ERC, and ensure that you accurately calculate the credit and maximize your benefits. What are gross receipts? The definition of gross receipts for the ERC includes all revenue received or accrued by the employer, including sales of products or services, interest, dividends, and rents. The definition of gross receipts does not include amounts collected on behalf of others, such as sales tax or third-party fees. Significant Decline in Gross Receipts for Tax Year 2020 To qualify for the Employee Retention Credit, ERC, in 2020, eligible employers must have experienced a significant decline in gross receipts due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Specifically, the decline in gross receipts must be more than 50% compared to the same quarter in 2019. 
For example, if an eligible employer's gross receipts for the second quarter of 2020 were $200,000, but their gross receipts for the second quarter of 2019 were $500,000, they would have experienced a 60% decline in gross receipts meeting the ERC requirement. Their gross receipts for the second quarter of 2020 decreased by 60% compared to 2019, which is more than 50%. It's important to note that under the CARES Act, once an employer's gross receipts for a quarter are less than 50% compared to the same quarter in the previous year, the employer is considered to have experienced a significant decline in gross receipts for that quarter and all subsequent quarters until their gross receipts exceed 80% of the same quarter in the previous year. Significant Decline in Gross Receipts for the Tax Year 2021 The rules for determining a significant decline in gross receipts in 2021 differ from the rules in 2020. Under the Consolidated Appropriations Act, 2021, eligible employers with 500 or fewer employees are considered to have experienced a significant decline in gross receipts if their gross receipts for a calendar quarter in 2021 are less than 80% of their gross receipts for the same calendar quarter in 2019. This threshold applies to all quarters in 2021. For example, if an eligible employer's gross receipts for the second quarter of 2021 were $350,000 and their gross receipts for the second quarter of 2019 were $500,000, then they would have experienced a 30% decline in gross receipts. So their 2021 receipts were 70% of those for the same period in 2019. They would meet the requirement for a significant decline. A nice addition in 2021 is the alternate election. Employers may use the preceding quarter's gross receipts to determine eligibility for the ERC in the current quarter. For example, an employer qualifies for the credit based on a significant decline in quarter 1 of 2021, but not quarter 2 of 2021. That employer may use their first quarter 2021 eligibility to claim the second quarter 2021. This applies to all quarters, except quarter 4, as the credit ends for all eligible employers with quarter 3 2021 except startup recovery businesses. Impact of PPP Loans on Eligibility If forgiven, the PPP loan can impact your employee retention credit qualification. The interaction between the PPP loan and the ERC can be complex. You must consider the following to allocate the forgiven PPP funds to individual employee wages. The amount of the forgiven loan. The covered period selected on your forgiveness application and. The amount reported as payroll cost on your forgiveness application. The employee retention credit is computed as a percentage of qualified wages. Therefore, ERC qualified wages must be reduced by any portion of those wages that have been paid for with forgiven PPP funds as computed above. For most businesses, the PPP was insufficient to cover 100% of ERC eligible wages, but depending on the covered period, it could significantly reduce the credit. Unforgiven PPP loans do not impact ERC. Determining Eligible Wages and Qualified Expenses Keep in mind eligible wages are the based wages that the ERC credit percentage can be applied. Here's a general overview. For 2020, the maximum eligible wages are $10,000 per employee for the entire year. Therefore, the credit amount equals 50% of eligible wages paid to each employee, up to a maximum credit of $5,000 annually. For 2021, the maximum eligible wages are increased to $10,000 per employee per quarter. Therefore, the max credit amount is equal to 70% of eligible wages paid to each employee, up to a maximum credit of $7,000 per employee per quarter. It's essential for eligible employers to carefully review the rules and consult with a tax professional to ensure they accurately calculate the credit and maximize their benefits. This white paper has been prepared by Kedra Flowers, a certified public accountant, CPA, for general informational purposes only. It is not intended to serve as a substitute for professional expertise or judgment in any specific situation. 
The content presented herein is meant to provide a simplified and digestible overview of complex financial, accounting, or tax-related topics. As such, readers are strongly advised to consult with a qualified professional before making any financial, accounting, or tax-related decisions based on the information provided in this white paper. While every effort has been made to ensure the accuracy, completeness, and reliability of the information contained in this white paper, Kedra Flowers cannot guarantee that the content is free from errors, misstatements, or omissions. Therefore, the provided information should be used as guidance and for informational purposes only, not as definitive or binding legislation. By accessing, reading, or otherwise using this white paper, the reader acknowledges and agrees they are solely responsible for their actions and decisions. Kedra Flowers shall not be held liable for any errors, inaccuracies, or omissions in the content, nor for any loss or damage resulting from reliance on the information provided. It is the responsibility of the reader to seek professional advice from a qualified expert before making any financial, accounting, or tax-related decisions. Any reliance on the information contained in this white paper is at the reader's own risk. Kedra Flowers and Kedra Flowers CPA PC disclaims any and all warranties, express or implied, with respect to the content and information provided in this white paper.